This is my review of the CAT S60 smartphone. It is a rugged smartphone. It is also waterproof up to 5 meters or 16 feet for one hour. If you look at the front very closely, you actually have these little switches here that actually locks out water from getting inside the microphone and, of course, the loudspeaker down here at the bottom. Talking about the loudspeaker, it gets really loud and actually has pretty decent bass, mids, and highs to it. Only issue is, is when you're using like a music app or you put music on your phone or use Spotify or Google Play Music, can you have it cranked up to full volume? It does get a little distorted. Another rundown on the phone will come here on the side. This will be the power button, of course. This is a programmable key. It allows you to program it for a long and short press. So if I short press it, my flashlight turns on on the back. And if I do a long press, it will actually turn on or open the app for the flare thermal imaging camera. On the back side here, we have the flare camera, which is covered by this gold ring, 13 megapixel camera here, two tone LED flash. This compartment in the back is where both, it's a dual SIM phone, so there's two different SIM slots and also micro SD card. And on the website, it is saying that it supports up to 256 gigabytes. And on the CATS website that sells this phone says 128 gigabytes. The back has a carbon fiber look to it. Uh, back to this side, there is an S a dedicated SOS button. You can program this to send out a text message. And you can program it up to, I believe, five people to receive that message, and it will send GPS coordinates to those people when this button's pressed. Underneath is where your power is. It's a micro USB. It is a quick charge 2.0. And then, of course, you have this flap here for your headphone jack or 3.5 millimeter. Back to the front of the phone, you have a front-facing 5 megapixel autofocus camera. You have your dedicated buttons for Android. And then this little port here is actually a water sensor. So when this phone is submerged in water, it will bring a, a screen up and it will tell you that if you want to run this program here, which is called speaker dry, and that will dry out the speakers if they're wet. Now the speakers don't get wet if, it, if the switches are locked to five meters. They do not get wet. It's only if it's in the two meter mode, which is going to be six feet. Uh, on this side here, it's just your dedicated up and down for your volume control. Uh, there's nothing on the bottom, and on the top, there's just this little hump here that has the flare branding for the flare thermal imaging camera. Uh, the specs on this phone, it is running a 617 Snapdragon processor. It is a quad-core processor. There is 32 gigs of onboard storage for all your applications, and it has three gigabytes of RAM. Battery is a 3,800 milliamp battery. It is quick charge 2.0 on that, but unfortunately there is no wireless charging for this guy. And I wish there was because opening up waterproof ports over time, they'll eventually wear out, and it may make this phone not so waterproof up to that 5 meters or 16 feet. And yes, the phone can survive underwater for one hour is what CAD is rating it as. Now, going to the screen on this phone, it is a 4.7 inch. It is an IPS panel. It also allows the user to use this phone wearing gloves, and it's also water resistant so if you get water on the screen the screen will still work but if it's like rain droplets or anything hitting the screen that's water sometimes it will act as a fingerprint press and it will actually open up applications uh, when it comes to gaming on this phone a lot of games work fairly fine fallout shelter is a pretty intensive game and on other Android phones I own, when I try to download that game, it says it's not compatible with the device. But everything here works. Pokemon Go, Dead Trigger 2 runs at a good 60 frames a second. Uh, CSR Racing 2 works totally fine. Need for Speed Most Wanted, NFL Madrin. No issues on gameplay, not too much stutter or anything of that nature. 
So everything runs fairly well there. The phone itself actually runs Marshmallow uh, 601, and CAT as a company actually sends out security updates pretty frequently to this phone. It also now comes with Google Assistant, so Google Assistant works. According to Pocket Lit, Google took the voice assistant as well as bots like the ones found in Facebook Messenger and rolled them all in. But you kind of get the point there. Back to the screen. Uh, screen pixel density on this guy is uh, 312 pixels for the pixel density. It is a 720p display. My only gripe with it is there's kind of a yellowish tint to the screen, and I wish there was something in the software where you can control color temperature to maybe give it, you know, to kind of get rid of that yellowish tint to it. But you really don't notice it until you actually hold it up to, say, other phones of, you know, like a Samsung or an Apple phone, you might notice that color difference. But the phone by itself, there's no issue there. I'll go ahead and click into the thermal imaging app and show you how this works. So as I look around my room here, you can see, like there's the door, sun shining through, so it's picking up that heat there in the background, table, and of course if I put my hand in front of it, it's going to go ahead and try to autofocus, or even if I stick my hand on the table, and I let go, you can see where my handprint was at because of the thermal imaging camera. Talking about cameras on this phone, the 13 megapixel auto shooter on the back, it's an all right camera as long as you're in decent lighting. If you're in low light situations, it's pretty grainy and maybe a software because it is running the Android software for taking pictures on the camera side. There's a lot of settings in there, but maybe it just needs a little bit better work. But I would say the camera is average. It's not as bad as what I've seen on some of the cheaper cell phones on the market. But it does work. And the front-facing camera does a pretty good job. It is 5 megapixel. It is an autofocus. It's going to get you know get you through the day when it comes to maybe you know using it for, like, say, Snapchat, selfie taking, uh, Skype, conference calls, or even Google Hangouts. Uh, I would definitely recommend this phone, especially if you're looking for a rugged smartphone that can take a beating. This phone is also drop tested from, I believe, two meters or six feet to concrete without actually breaking it. The glass on the front is a Gorilla Glass 4. It is actually a thicker glass than what they would put on a standard cell phone to get that better drop resistance to concrete at six feet. Then over here, this is the nice little box that it came in. It's almost kind of like a iPhone box. Up here you have waterproof, five meters for one hour. Then on the bottom here, thermal imaging by flare. Pretty simple box. And if you want to buy this cell phone, it is retailing now at this website for $629. It is a GMS phone only, so it only works with SIM cards. It is unlocked. This phone won't work on Verizon or Sprint due to uh, they're not a GMS network, but any other GMS network, this phone has no problem working on there at all. It is a 4G phone, LET, 4G, 4G, 3G, 2G. It picks up all, this, all the frequencies that are out there. The phone is kind of heavy. This is all metal here. This whole silver part that you see on this phone is definitely all real thick like a maybe aluminum or it might be aluminum but it's really strong the door on the back is metal this is a metal backing door this is a harder plastic and the carbon fiber i reached out to cat and they haven't got back with me if this is actually real carbon fiber or just a fake plastic carbon fiber look uh, battery life on this phone i get well over eight hours of on-screen time in fact when I hit about 15% battery, I'm well over the eight hour mark of on-screen time. And that's pretty much heavy use. I, this is my daily driver. I use it all day long, even into the evening hours. I'm usually plugging it in at about 15% around maybe 10 or 11 at night. 
So I definitely would recommend this phone if you're looking for a rugged smartphone that can handle a beating, handle going underwater. Thermal camera, of course, is a unique feature of its own. And for the price tag, it's actually not too bad for a rugged phone. So that would be my review on, of course, the Cat S60 smartphone. I'll go ahead and leave this little intro here if you want to buy the phone at catphones.com. And you guys have a great day and hopefully you like my review.